process necessarily. I think we've all individually practiced and prepared as though we need to be ready to play. Um, so that'll continue to be the focus. That was Danny Vandenboom on the Wisconsin quarterback room's mentality after Jack Cohen went down with a foot injury. More on him in a bit, but the Badgers will need to use that mindset again because CBS Sports is reporting that Graham Mertz, the guy who replaced Cohen, has tested positive for COVID-19, meaning the Kansas Cannon will be out 21 days. Now Chase Wolf, who is the next QB in line, he hasn't practiced this week and according to the Journal Sentinel, has also tested positive and the team is awaiting the results of his second test. Which means on Saturday, fourth string QB Danny Vandenboom could be the guy under center for Paul Chris. Now the biggest question surrounding DVB, who is he? Well, Vanden Boom has the highest career quarterback rating in school history at 455.2 thanks to his only pass attempt, a three-yard touchdown two years ago against New Mexico. And at Kimberly High School, all he did was win. Vanden Boom was 28-0 as a starter, and he led the papermakers to back-to-back -back state championships. He also was thrown into the fire as a sophomore and succeeded, which is why his high school head coach, Steve Jones, says he'll be just fine on Saturday. He's such a poised person, leader, athlete, quarterback, you know, he just never uh, got too high, never got too low. And he always responded really well during uh, adverse times. So I, I don't think it's too big for him. I, again, I think he's built for this. He's a guy that prepares as if, you know, pre prepares as if he's going to be the guy. And again, he's a competitor. I think he's always wanted to be the guy. One thing to remember, too, the Wisconsin-Nebraska game could be canceled if a team has too many positive cases over a seven-day span. The Big Ten's guideline state practices and games can't be held if more than 5% of all players tested on a team are positive. So that means if 113 Badgers are on the roster and tested and six are tested positive, the game will be ruled a no contest and they won't be able to practice or play for seven days. Oh, so. gosh. Uh, yeah, this is a headache because we just don't know. Right. Welcome to week six of the season, and it was a good one. Win streaks were on the line, conference title races grew tighter, and we'll start off with one of the best teams in our area. In their four wins this season, Baraboo has outscored their opponents 113-3, to proving the Thunderbirds can get it done on both sides of the ball. But their week six opponent, the Goslings, enter tonight hungry. Watertown is coming off back-to-back -back road losses, and it's their final home game of the year. Baraboo, though, struck first. Owen knocked it all. One cut, and he gone 45 yards to the house. Thunderbirds jumped out to an 8 nothing lead just like that, and they'd add to it in the second. Luna Larson sets his feet and chucks it deep to Riley Way. 39 yards on the score and puts Baraboo up 16-zip, but Watertown would answer. Caleb Huff going to call his own number and scamper in, but Baraboo gets the win tonight, 45-26. to Edgewood on the road tonight in Reedsburg, but the Crusaders celebrating senior night. Beavers, though, would get the party started. Bryant Yankee with the old QB keeper, and it works to perfection. 32 yards on the score. Reedburg goes up 7-0. Edgewood, though, would answer. Mason Folkers with the short pass to Jackson Trudgeon, and he's running a long way. 87 yards to the house, a game tied at 7. Then in the second, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Folkers to trudge in again. What a night for Jackson. Seven catches, a buck 49 yards, and two tutties. Crusaders get win number four on the year, 21 to 15. After two weeks off, Mineral Point was back in action, and I'm guessing the pointers were ready to let it rip. In the first three weeks of the season, they were rolling. Kind of like the Blackhawks, who were on a four-game winning streak. So something had to give tonight in spring green. Mineral Point up 7-0. River Valley driving. Will Bailey hits a streaking land in alt. And he's got reservations for six. 81 yards on the pitch and catch. Blackhawks tie the game up at seven. Third quarter now, still tied at seven, and that's when the pointers went to work. Liam Stump rolls out and finds Dominic McVeigh, and he gives Mineral Point the lead for good. They get the win 28 to 19. 
Portage is in the middle of a tough three-game stretch to close out the year. Last week, it was undefeated Edgar. This week, undefeated Lakeside Lutheran. Next week, one loss Baraboo. On the plus side, Warriors are playing at home. Now, Lakeside Lutheran also nicknamed the Warriors, and they had a huge second quarter, already up 7-0. Brian Guzman runs over a would-be tackler in his way for six. Then later, it's Micah Cody's turn. He takes it in from a yard out. Lakeside Lutheran goes up 21-0, and you know they can do it through the air, too. Nathan Chesterman hits a wide-open John O'Donnell. All Lakeside Lutheran in this one. They win it 35-6. There's a lot on the line in the East Suburban Conference for Waterloo and Cambridge. If the Pirates beat the Blue Jays, then they keep pace with Marshall and set up a huge game next Friday between the two. If Cambridge wins, then they keep their conference title hopes alive. See, told you this was a big one. No score in the first, but the Blue Jays were on the move. Ezra Stein lofts one up to the younger Stein, Eli, and he takes it all the way down to the one-yard line. And the elder Ezra is like, hey, don't worry, I got it from here. He plunges it in to make it 7-0 Cambridge. And the scoring wasn't done. Later in the quarter, it's Trey Colts running it in on fourth down to put the Blue Jays up two scores. Then later, it's Ezra Stein again going untouched from nine yards out. Cambridge rolls 43-13. to And still to come, Kevin King out, Josh Jackson in again. Why Matt LaFleur says he likes what he's seen from the young DB. More sports after the break. Josh Jackson will get another opportunity to prove himself on Sunday with Kevin King ruled out again. The former Hawkeye defensive back is set to make his third straight start for the Packers. And with his stint of extended playing time, his confidence is growing and he's had more good plays than bad, which is what Matt LaFleur likes to see. But he also knows Jackson has to keep stacking good performances together. He's getting more com comfortable, which naturally brings more confidence and when you have more confidence you're going to go out there and and play better so obviously you're only as good as your last game in this league and he's going to have to put together another great performance and and that's what we expect out of him last night the brewers declined ryan braun's 15 million dollar option making the former nl mvp a free agent for the first time in his career and the franchise wasn't done declining today milwaukee said no to jed jerko eric sogard and ben gamel's options for the 2021 season making all three of them free agents as well the best thing greg guard has going for him right now his team is a veteran one during their time home, they put in the work so they'd be ready for practice because they knew there wasn't a lot of time to waste this season. And at practice, guys like Micah Potter and Nate Reavers are helping Tyler Wall and the other freshman bigs get better by passing down what they've learned from their time in the Big Ten and how to take it to assistant coach Joe Krabinoff in the drills. I know they've shared tips and stories on things, probably from being pushed around by an assistant coach in practice a few times, too. Um, they, they, they don't like that very much, so sometimes that's incentive enough. They don't want to be pushed around. But, uh, no, I'm not, that's what's fun about coaching here is when you get a group of guys that really enjoys helping pass along those, those you know, advice and those things they learned over the years. That's it for sports. We're back after this. things the Brewers haven't done this season. Win any game besides game two in a series, win a series, and score first in a game. Let's just say that's what we call foreshadowing. Rubber match between the crew and the Pirates, and they weren't waving at me, just the ball. You'll see. Ben Gamble absolutely tattoos one to right. The 408-foot bomb puts the Brew crew up 2-0. Now, same score in the six, and Keston here has something against the Pirates. He homered yesterday, does it again today. Seventh career long ball against Pittsburgh. Milwaukee gets their first series win, 3-0 the final. Every team in the USL League One doesn't have to travel to play their home games, except forward Madison. In order to play in front of their fans, the Flamingos had to find their home away from home this season, Hart Park. And while they are racking up the miles, the Mingos wouldn't have it any other way. Just call forward Madison. Yeah, we're just expanding our footprint in Wisconsin. Road Warriors this season. 
definitely a test for our mental fortitude, but uh, it's going to make us stronger, and it's uh, you know it's going to make us as a group come together and, and understand that there's nothing that can be thrown at us that we're not going to be able to to take on. You see, the Flamingos don't really have a home this year. We knew it was coming, so we just mentally we had to be strong and stay positive, and if we had to uh, drive two hours, three hours, we'll, we'll do it. Instead of training in Madison, the team makes the 58-mile trek to Wisconsin Dells during the week. Then on game days, instead of playing at Breeze Stevens, it's Hart Park this year, 73 miles away in Wauwatosa. I would have much rather have to make the commute from Madison to Milwaukee to train than not train at all or not play at all. The big thing about being professional is whatever's put in your way, you still got to show up and perform. So you kind of just got to remove that from your psyche. It may not be our fault that we have to go do these things, but we got to take responsibility and own it and get on with it. And the Mingos have, which in turn has brought them closer. It's an extra motivation for us to, to, to think, hey, you know what, we went through all this and, and we just Hopefully at the end we, we get the result that we want. Celebrating a championship with the rest of the flock. Home opener at Hart Park at Wauwatosa is this Friday at 7. Forward Madison takes on Greenville Triumph. And don't forget, TVW is the home of the Flamingos this season. So you'll be able to watch Friday's game live. We're back after this.